Authentication is one of the most important things about web development. In simple terms, it just makes tracking your users much easier. So if they want to buy anything or if they have like a premium subscription to something, you can give them the access or special privileges that they want. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a basic understanding of how authentication works so you can get started with building it in your own apps. And so the starting point of all authentication, authentication, authentication starts out in the front end. And in like many, many applications, you basically have a couple of options. In my Nizi starter kit that is coming out very, very soon, if we head over to the login page, we just have a front end telling you if you want to log in or register an account. Now you probably know this, but essentially just put in your name, email, password, or whatever you want. In addition, you can have a couple of options like Google Auth and GitHub Auth. And so basically our goal as developers is to take whatever is in here, store the user's information to be remembered in a database, and then give them something like a token or identification key to then remember that they are a user in our application. And so obviously in all applications, right, we have a backend or some sort of database to remember who they are. Now, this generally does not matter what you use. I personally use Neon DB. It's a Postgres database that I use with uh, Prisma or Drizzle. But basically, here's where we will be storing the users. So whatever the user put into here, we're sending that to here. But in the middle, we have a lot to do. Here's where most of the magic will happen. Basically, the data that the user put into here, right, has to go through the middle here, which is usually some sort of API that does stuff with the data, which is then stored in the database. And you may be asking, like, what is this middle thing here that requires us to do stuff before sending it to the database? You can kind of think of this as a uh, management tools that let us do things with the authentication. So the user is not only going to register or log in. We also have things like password reset. We have to also be able to give them tokens. We also have to give them access keys, stuff like that. That is only done in the API. It can't be done in the front end. It can be done in the database. It can only be done in, in the middle, if you can say. And so things like creating a user that is done over here, giving them tokens, creating tokens, also sending them verification emails. Essentially, right, everything needed to create a user or do stuff with the user is done over here. And so one last time before getting started with the code walkthrough, the user basically uh, writes down their information in the front end. So something like this. And we take whatever the user's data is in here and whatever we are required to do is done in the middle. You can kind of think of this as the intermediary, which we are doing whatever the user wants. If they want to register, we create some sort of register function. If they want to log in, we create a login function. If they need a verification token, we do that as well. And then once we are finished, right, we store whatever the user wants into a database so that they are remembered. For example, they just created an account. We store their name, email, and password here, as well as a token when they ask for it. In addition, if they ask for a verification email, which we require in our apps, we maybe have some sort of Boolean or check saying that they verified their email. And by the way, if you're confused about anything, then I will leave the Discord channel down below. It's our Nizzy community. Um, I don't know why we call it that, but I just, you know, it's just stuck. Um, essentially, just have a bunch of developers there. So if you want to ask questions, if you want to join a cool community of over a thousand developers, I will leave that down below. But regardless, we can just get rid of this eraser page and we can just walk through what this code would look like. Okay, so you're probably looking at the screen right now and saying, Nizar, this is a lot of um, imports. I know it is, and it's for a specific reason. It is not because of the UI, which we're talking about first. So we'll let's go over the UI first, and then we'll talk about all the uh, actions and stuff like that later. Essentially, I'm assuming you know a little bit of basic React code and HTML. We're just using something like Shadsian UI and Next UI as a way to design things. Here, we're just calling a form. You don't really need this, but it's just a form. And in here, we're just creating different labels and fields so that we can track exactly what the user is putting in. For example, here we have an input for the email, email as the label, so you can see it over here. And within here, we have the input. And at the bottom here, we have the register button. In addition to create these two buttons over here, all I had to do was in my card wrapper, which just makes things a little bit easier, I have a social button, which has both the Google Auth and the GitHub Auth. These are not yet functional for the SaaS app, but I plan to do that very soon. In addition, one more thing about the UI, I like to create some form of form success or form error so that whenever there is a success message that I want to display or an error message that I want to display, it will be displayed over here. So let's say the user forgot their password. 
we get this over here. This is just done as a result of having a form success or form error and then error tracking so that the user gets a notification when we want something from them, right? And okay, so as of now, we've done everything in the UI. Again, um, I will leave the link to my main platform down below. It has basically everything for a SaaS app. Like, um, it's this one. Here, I'll, I'll just show you. It's in the Zyabi platform. It has authentication. So if you want to know how it's built, this is basically just what I did. You can see if I go to sign up, um, there's like the name, email, and password, just so if you want to know how it works, I'll leave this GitHub repository down below. And okay, so it's one thing then to build out the UI for an authentication, and it's another, and in my opinion, it's much more difficult to be able to track the data and to register the data and to know what is going on when the user does stuff with the inputs. And in any authentication, we need to track the values of whatever is in here. And to do that, we can create some form of schema to know what is going on. And to track our schemas, we are using something called Zod. You can think of Zod as a schema tracker. It, it, it just makes tracking data wherever you want much easier. And so for example, right here, we have the register schema. And within it, we have a couple of fields, right? Like the email, password, and name. And we're essentially telling Zod that these are the fields that you should look out for. So when we call this in our front end, make sure that these are available. And these things over here, don't worry about them too much. They may be a little bit confusing, but these just tell Zod exactly what the types is. So for example, it's an email, we put a dot email. Also, we can do something like tracking how many letters there are. So if we want a minimum of eight characters for the password, we can do that. So if there's one character, for example, I can do, so, do something like this and we can get a notification saying that there's minimum eight characters. And look, I know this is a little bit much, but then all we need to do is just call that register schema in our front end. So over here, this is the register form and I'll actually refresh. And within it, we're just getting the email, password and name and setting it to nothing for now. What we're doing is once we submit this form, we're taking the data that we put into here. So if it was like this, like this, like this, we're taking the data into here and we are sending it to the register function that we will cover. And okay, so as of now, right, we have talked about both the schema and the front end, but where is this data going? You know, we're just creating the schema, we're tracking whatever's there, but the data has to go somewhere for authentication to work. And for that, we have a register action. So remember in our um, eraser page, over here, we had the middle part, right? And this main middle part is done in the actions folder over here. So we have a register and a login. And basically you can think of this middle part as where we do absolutely everything to manage the user. For example, we want to hash the password. We can hash the password. If we want to create a new user, we can create a new user using our ORM and just error handlings if there is any. This is where the data is going and then is stored in our database or ORM. So here we have, for example, some code to display what the user could be. So for example, the model user will have a name, email, email verified, image, password, role, stuff like that. In addition, we want like a verification token, we can, a password reset token, we also can. And this is just the back end. The back end for everyone will be a little bit different, but this is what it could look like for you. But yeah, this is where all the fun stuff happens. If let me just go back to the register.ts. And within this right here, I'll just t tell you what's going on here. We're grabbing the register schema data from the front end. So whenever the user submitted something, right, the register schema is the, the items within this. We're then sending that to this middle part where we are validating that everything is working. And then we're hashing the password because we obviously don't want to know what the user's password is. And if anyone hacked in, they will not have access to the user's password. And essentially over here is we're checking if there's an existing user. And if there is, we just say email already exists. And if there isn't, then we just create a new user. And so if we go into the register, we can actually just check if this will work, but let's do something like this and hit register and hopefully we get email sent. So cool. So this is basically telling us that everything works and we're getting this email sent from over here where it just says email sent because it is a success obviously. And, and by the way, this was done just using basic Next.js. Like I didn't install anything other than like Zod Resolver and Bcrypt and stuff like that. But what you probably want to do after all of this, like if you're just natively building this, is to do something like next author, install something like next author. I think it's called auth.js now. So let me just check that. Yeah, it's auth.js now. It's just getting a little bit confusing. But essentially, this just allows you to manage things a lot easier. And if you want stuff like Google auth, like OAuth, you probably want to install it. 
in addition, it just allows you to handle stuff a lot better. And I, honestly, it's a little bit safer than just building stuff on your own. But yeah, I did this for my recent application of the platform. It was very easy. And uh, it was just a lot easier, you know, installing Next Auth to manage users and to display user data or grab user data. Um, it just makes things just a lot easier. But yeah, if you like the video, like the video, check the video on the screen. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.